I just thought that he's just some old guy as good sax player. Yeah. You know? And so William uh, he went up there and uh, William was living he got a job and he moved up there, moved his family up there, and Ron was there and then Ron decided Ron and Pam decided to move down here. Yeah. And so William calls me up. And he said, man, he said, oh, Ron is going to come down. Ron is moving down if you can help him get some gigs. And I'm thinking, church gigs? Uh, I don't think I can get him get some church gigs, you know, because I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. And he says, uh, no, no, some gigs. So I was playing with a big horn band called the D Street Band at the time. Yeah. And I had a, I got, got a chance to hear Ron a couple of times, so I was duly impressed. You know, more than playing for Will's dad's funeral. And so I started finding out some of this stuff. And this, this is the best story. So, uh, Ronnie, I tell Ronnie, I'm, I'm playing for a festival out there in Cross Springs. And uh, Ronnie, I don't know how we were talking about it. He says, uh, let me know if you need somebody. You know, like, if you need somebody, uh, let me know I'm going to come. He says, I don't care. I play for a bank robber. <laughs> I said, tell you what. <laughs> so I said, I'll tell you what, bro. I said, I'll tell you what. I said, we're playing in Cross Springs for a festival. Y'all was on the road, Cross Springs. Yeah, big time. Big time. <laughs> so, uh, we had a, a full horn section, and uh, uh, Mike Ritter was playing with us. And they had two other sax guys. And I told Ron, I said, bring your, bring your tenor and bring your Barrett. Because Ron can play a Barrett, like a Barrett player is supposed to play a Barrett. Yeah. So, anyway. We're doing these tunes, man, and uh, I forget what, uh, it doesn't matter, it's irrelevant what song it was. I think it was an old Eddie Floyd song. And so I try to give those guys each a chance to, to play. I do like a verse and, I, you know, I let them cover it. Well, at first, I had, had an old guy, a good sax player, his name is Percy, Percy, uh, anyway. He played, and then I let Ritter play. And Ritter's a good trumpet player, real good trumpet player. Yeah. And uh, then, they, then uh, Percy's brother played. So... I went around, made around again, and Tony, you know Tony Ardman? Tony was playing bass, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so anyway, I let Ronnie take the, instead of the guitar solo, I let Ronnie, and Ritter, it was like, the two sax guys, well, here, here was Ronnie, here's the two sax guys all together, and here's Ritter on the other side. Ronnie starts blowing a solo on Barrett. I see Ritter, he's doing he literally walks around and he's on the side of him. <laughs> so I said, well, I really got a new best friend. Yeah, he, he impressed him. Huh? <laughs> that was so funny. <clears throat> really, he's, yeah. he, he chews it, you know. Yeah. If you're making, to make an impression on him, you better be good. Uh, it was fun talking about Ron. Actually, Ron was on Facebook. We were messaging today. And I told him, you know, he'd sit that list out. We were going back and forth. And I said, man, you come back and visit. And, it, and I told him, I said, we're going to come right out to your place and talk about it. You know? Because uh, he's like, oh, forget about a lot of these people. But if you ask me questions, I can I oh, tell you stories about it. I they kind of started off. He showed yeah. me a picture one time. And I said, he's... he's I think he's with Elton John, and he's got this yeah. big ass furry coat. Uh huh. <laughs> and I said, Elton John. Yeah, I said, dude, you still got that coat? <laughs> he said, Oh, wish I had. <laughs> it is awesome when you talk about you know some of the local musicians and some of the oh, people dude. that actually got time to spend playing with people. You know, they got some, that some of the old cats and stuff. Like VJ Bully, he's, got a, he's a DJ now, and he knows like everybody, all them old cats. Okay. He told me a story one time about old TK Hewlett when he was young. Uh, they brought him on the radio, and they were asking him some questions. And so they asked him a question, he do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, no camera. <laughs> you have to talk. <laughs> That's the best, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I left all of that out. I had two years still with TK even. Yeah. Uh, man. I remember playing a band with, uh, you know, Kippy Bakke? Kippy's a talent buyer. Yeah. For, well, Kippy's a phenomenal guitar player. He played with Wayne where he was. He, he messed up a piece of his finger so he didn't play anymore. Mm -hmm. And Kippy and I back in the day, we were playing. Uh, and Kippy got me, got me, uh, got me on stage with uh, uh, Edgar Winters' White Trash. 
Oh, yeah. And Johnny was with him. So I got to play with Edgar and Johnny, and, 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 you know, and I was pretty cool. But at that, uh, and that's how I met all the guys at White Trash, like uh, uh, John Smith, who's with the Boogie King, John Smith, yeah. Smith uh, Cal Arnold, who's not with us anymore, uh, Marshall Sear, who is all, you know, all these old White Trash, and they were the, they were the band. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I got, you know, because of him, I got to meet all them. But anyway, he, uh, he decides he's gonna put a band together. So he said, we're gonna call it, and he, he writes it down, the Ace Tones. I said, Kip, it looks like acetone. <laughs> <laughs> he said, but it's not. It's the Ace Tones. I said, but it looks like the acetone. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, said, I, I promise you, I promise you, anywhere it would have been written, it would have been the answer. Because I, I just, I just blew it, <laughs> blew it out of the water. It's not. Uh, you just rained on his. Oh yeah, I'm pissing this cold place, man. Oh. <laughs> What's your most memorable experience playing Tony? Like, sticks out. Oh, dude, yeah, my most memorable. This one is altogether different. Greg Martin has, uh, he, uh, when he was out there in uh, in Atlantic City, he met this guy who was the man. He was management for Harold Melvin's Blue Notes. Harold Melvin had died, and as Ted Pendergrass wasn't with him anymore, but the Blue Notes were still a band, a pretty pretty popular band. I don't know if you remember them. If you don't know me by now, oh, yeah. yeah, them yeah, guys. Anyway, definitely. so. I get a call. Greg says, "Hey man, Harold Melvin's Blue Notes needs a guitar player at one night in Baton Rouge." I told him that you were the man that could cover it. I said, "Oh, dude, yeah, I'm gonna do that." So they send me the material. The the, uh, the, the management sends me the material, and uh, I learn all the stuff. I learn the whole set. It, you know, it's just good chunky funk rhythm. So I'm like, "Okay, I got this thing." Well, Lynn comes with me. We go out there. And uh, it's, uh, I forget, it's a casino in Baton Rouge. And uh, when I get there, uh, the sound guy helps me get my stuff off. And I walk in the back room where they introduced me to Howard Melvin's Blue Notes. And uh, they, of course, they were all black. And that's, well, I expected that, it was not a big deal. So um, they were asking me if I knew the stuff. And so we were going, we were going back there, had a little practice amp. And so I'm playing the guitar parts and they say, we want you to play the keyboard parts. Huh? I said, well, I should have got a keyboard player. <laughs> he said, no, man. He said, well, you know, shortening it up. Apparently, besides the guitar player, I don't know if he didn't, if he left or whatever, but the keyboard player got busted for dope. So they were not, they didn't have any guitar player, they didn't have any keyboard player. They had a drummer, they had a bass player, and three singers. Yeah. <laughs> and they want me to do the keyboard parts. Well, I'm going to just tell you, the drummer... A little bitty guy, he was just the most negative and might I add, prejudiced fella I had ever come come across. Okay. And so you have to understand from my point of view, I had, they needed a guitar player, so I had to learn all the guitar. Yeah, before. you've done what you were asked to do, you know? or prepared to do. Yeah. So he said, "Well, you know, I need you to play this." Huh? I said, <laughs> "We we 15 minutes from a gig over here." Yeah. So he turns around and looks at the, the bass player and the singers, and he said. I told you he couldn't do it. I told you he wouldn't be able to do it. So I mean, he was really kind of, kind of rubbing me the wrong way. Yeah, know? absolutely. And so rather than kind of get into it with him, I looked at the bass player. I said, uh, "Why don't you just let me play? I know the songs. Just let me cover it." <laughs> so he says, "You're about all we got then." That's what he's telling me. Yeah. I said, "Well, since since you put it that way, yeah." I said, if not, listen, ain't no skin on my nose. I'm 40 miles down the road, bro. Yeah. I'll pack my shit and go home. Yeah. So they decide to, they're going to try me out. Yeah. Get up there, let me tell you something. In all honesty, and I'm not giving myself any credit, those singers were so good. Yeah. They were so damn good. They didn't need nobody. They didn't need no drummer. They, didn't, they just had it. So let's uh, make it, and, and plus bass player was quite good. Mm -hmm. So I was e easy able to work with them. Uh -huh. So needless to say, the show went off well, better than expected. So I'm doing my thing, I look back there, I see that drummer, he's <laughs> <laughs> Best friend when it was over. <laughs> you know, 
pays all that? And then he tells me, we get done. And they give me my money. And he walks up to me, and everybody's still out there. He says, hey, man, I tell you what. As far as I'm concerned, you're a lifetime member of the Blue Notes. <laughs> I bit my tongue. I bit my tongue. I want to say, you know, so <laughs> Oh, yeah, I was all but the worst nigga that walked in the door. Surprises. <laughs> I came back and told that to Greg. He's like, oh, God, dude. <laughs> Next time Greg calls you for a gig, you can keep it. It didn't matter. It was all good. Call a keyboard player. It is. <laughs> way back, way back in the day, uh, when George Jones was alive, I, uh, I, uh, we, they had a club back in Judy's called Ellie Brissard's Ranch. Yeah. And they brought in, George Jones was actually married for a time to Ellie's Alex, daughter. daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would do some shows out there every now and then. So they, they had a sound guy. I don't remember if it was, if it was uh, guy, I mean, uh, if it was Mark Gamache. Somebody was there that night, but they needed somebody to turn the console off. And so I, I was there. I mean, I knew Mr. Alec, and you know, that's when we played that band Speed Limit. And they had these big draw doors where they would section off the, the dance hall concert area mm -hmm. from the bar, and they were all closed. A lot of them old clubs did that. Yeah, so they had a, and they had a stairwell that come up in the balcony. I didn't know more about running sound than the man in the moon. You know, I just knew how to turn the damn stuff on. That's it. I knew how to turn it on. Well, he's the best sound guy in the room. What? I was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was wanting to turn it. Anyway, so I got him, got him some levels, and George Jones comes out. And I'm like, no show, Jones. Shit. <laughs> I'm like shit. So you ran some. George Jones is down there, you know. So anyway, he went. He went through quite a few songs. And I got to hear. I got to sit down at the console and listen to George Jones. And you could put that on your resume. Oh, <laughs> so I got George Jones. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to get any credentials out because everybody's dead. <laughs> you didn't have nobody against you either. <laughs> no dispute. So. You was George Jones' best song guy. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. Now. Well, for the yeah. afternoon, anyway. Nobody to contest you. Uh, it, it wasn't a big gig, but I got called for a gig one time like that too. The guy, they needed a guitar player. Their guitar player was out sick and whatnot, and they didn't say anything to me about singing. I showed up. And then they told me the guitar player was also the lead singer. And they were like, well, we were told you you could sing. And I was like, well, I was told I was come over here for a guitar player, not to be the guitar player and the lead singer. Well, that's you know what I always tell people. That would be, uh, that would time, be hard hey, man, to we need a guitar. You mean need a guitar player it pays this much. Yeah. So I played three, four songs with him, and they say, hey, why don't you do something? I said, oh, wait. <laughs> no. Yeah. You asked me for a guitar player. I said, you paying a guitar player? Are you paying a guitar player and sing them? Because my price is going up. <laughs> yeah. You know, if I got a front for this group, we going to pay. You're going to pay me. And well, boy. That's it, what I was telling I was like, well, man, I didn't, I didn't plan on going over here being a front man. This wasn't my gig. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, I'm, I don't doubt your abilities, Hoyt, but if I paid yeah. to see Prince, you know, I would hate to see Hoyt up there. Yeah. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Well, you, know. you know, you can play somebody else on the guitar, but uh, yeah. we kind of need him. Well, I mean, they were just a cover band. Yeah, it wasn't nobody yeah. important, yeah. You know, and that was kind of my attitude. It was like, mm -hmm. well, man, what, what about the people who come here, y'all play? All, all of a sudden, you got some guy out there. <laughs> nah, nobody knew those guys. All right, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, Tony totally calling me, hey, man, can you feel it for me? I'm not feeling good Friday night. Yeah, just kind of brush your hair down in front of your face. It's an hour, you learn. <laughs> Dude, I totally, I totally get it. Yeah. I don't like, like, I got some friends, and they're good players. And some of them are not as good as others, but they're all pretty good. Yeah. Well, some of them are just bold and will literally go up where a band's group is playing and, and ask to sit in. Yeah. I will never. No, you can't. You can't. Never do that. Said. First of all, I don't want to be embarrassed. And second of all, I don't want to embarrass somebody. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of guys that's bowling. Never, like that. never, never. Now, you know, in a situation where I'll be somewhere listening to friends of mine and that's they different. know me, that's well, that's a whole different thing. Yeah, that's about. different. But I, like, I got some friends, they ain't got no qualms. I want to say, dude, you don't yeah. know. You, you, know you, you really want to get up there and show what you got? What if he ain't got it tonight? Yeah. yeah. Then what? Mm. You know, I, I'm. You know, I'm very much an introvert. Oh, I mean, even the opposite of that. If, if you're gonna go and show up and and say you are better, you know, you you playing with somebody else's gig, 
you know. And they invite you this one. Well, yeah, if you invite it, but then and then you have people tell not to invite strangers either. You know, they they know the people they invite. If you actually yeah. get the invitation, especially by people you know, yeah. Yeah, you need to you need to at least be gracious. Oh, absolutely. Do one song and then start to walk off and ask you to do another one. Yeah. Do another one and then that's it. Yeah, yeah. Don't ask me to do three. Don't want you know, no, it's not happening. This is your show. So we're talk, we gonna talk money. After three, we're talking money now. <laughs> we used to play with gangs there, and it was funny. Back, our band played with them a lot back in the day. With Glenn and those guys? Yeah. yeah. And uh, and he didn't like, uh, there was one Judas Priest song, and he didn't like singing it, and they would always play it. And we were there with him, we'd be hanging out, listen to him. And he would always sit around, he'd holler at me, Oi, you're up. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they were playing it. I think it was Electric Eye or something. But I would always, if I was there, he would always say, You're going to come sing that pre song with <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, I was like, Dude, I'm just here to hang out. You know? mm-hmm. But they were cool. We always had fun with those guys. They were really nice guys. Really nice, especially uh, guitar player Pat. Pat Beer, you know, yeah. Man, Pat was just. Oh, yeah. He was, he was phenomenal. I remember. Played with them at the Motor. They died. Yeah, yeah. But uh, a lot of them catch them going. And and Gangster had their PA set up. They were using their PA and running it. Mm-hmm. And, a bunch of bands playing. I think it was a show Jared set up on. Well, if it was Rock at Mona Me, I I completely did all the promotion work and all the booking through the, the uh, rock era at uh, Mona Me. Yeah. Uh, but I remember playing in the middle of the song, I, I broke a string on a guitar and I didn't bring my backup guitar. Because we, we were only playing like, you know, eight songs. You know, yeah. Ten songs, yeah, like yeah. one little set kind of thing. So we, we were playing, I broke a string or, or whatnot, and then I turned around, you know, I finished the song. By the time I finished the song, I turned back around, Pat had grabbed one of his guitars and brought it up and handed it to me, you know. And he took my guitar because I had strings in my case, and while we were playing the next song, he was oh, it brought it back. Handed it back to me by the end of the next song. I was like, man, that was. So he kept our tech for you. That's pretty cool. God, man. He always. Yeah, good. He was a good dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I, I, was, I was taken back when I heard he had passed away. I was like, man, what happened? Honestly, I miss the rock concerts at Mona Me. Like, I would love to yeah. find some young, but it, it's so different now. You know, there's no, there's no just out of high school or 20 year old rock bands anymore that would have any type of draw. It would be impossible yeah. Yeah. to do it. Either you're completely unknown. Are you real? You, there's nothing in the middle anymore. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it is. And if I don't stop hitting this microphone, I'm going to get <laughs> shot. Y'all going to fuss at me for something else. I think I tapped it three times today. It is different. Yeah. So there's one thing I love asking musicians about, especially guitar players, because I'm, I'm a gear guy. I love to hear about what you like to play. What's your favorite type of guitar? What's, 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 what's your Lucille? What's your number one? I actually have number four, four number ones. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I don't, uh, I don't buy a lot of them because mm-hmm. I, I kind of have what I like. Okay. And so I have a, um, I have an ES three thirty five, I have a Lemon Burst, uh, Gibson Les Paul, and uh, also a Bill Nash S sixty three, which is a uh, Stratocaster, and uh, a Stratocaster type, and I have a Melanso artist mm-hmm. and those four guitars kind of get me get you through it yeah you get you and of course if i'm cutting if i'm cutting track and i don't have an attic uh, i don't have a, a bass player and i have to do my own i'm fortunate to have a a, a 74 fender precision that i use to cut my bass tracks yeah a good a very good friend of mine who's way more than a friend yeah, allowed yeah absolutely me, allowed me this bass that's awesome and so i've been having it for quite some time and as far as for uh, live amps, I only have two, mm-hmm. but boy, there are two. I have a 64, 1964, a Blackface Super Reverb, which is really crazy, wonderful sounding. And I have an amp built by a guy in Baton Rouge, a guy by the name of Mike Kennedy, an amp called a Comet 60. And they're, they're not cheap. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I use that in a 410 cab for like my heavier stuff, you know, my more rockish stuff. But primarily, I use my Super. It kind that, of, that's the one. It, yeah, it kind of gets me where I want to be most of the time. Mm-hmm. Now that amps by. Oh, the, the Comet is a Comet. It's, it's a Comet. A that's that's Comet lame. with a K. Yeah. Okay. And so yeah, they're, they're phenomenal builders. Mm-hmm. They build off the uh, 
There's what, what, what was what, uh, an amp called a train wreck. It was a train wreck circuit. It's supposed to be the mystical rock amp used by uh, Leslie West of Mountain. Okay. And it's like a it's like a it's like how a Marshall Plexi would sound on its on a really good day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a question I like. That. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the preamp you were talking about earlier. Oh, you mean you mean my my, my ox? Yeah. Well, I run. I run amps through it. I run uh, um, this. It's a Universal Audio Ox, and it has a. Uh, it's it's autonomous, which you know, in a sense where I come out of, I can bring it, and I can use it with an amp, or I can just pop a head, plug into it, come straight out. Um, it doesn't need uh, a cabinet. Mm. You can use a cabinet, but it doesn't need it. Uh, and it works extremely well for recording because it's not a cabinet. It's not a cabinet simulator. It's a cabinet modeler. Okay. It's not an amp modeler. You use an amp. It's it, and not not only that, but of course UAD builds it, and UAD is pretty much second to none <laughs> with you know with, with a software and hardware. Mm -hmm. You know they got the 610B and 610A. They know what they're doing. And in this thing, you can uh, you can. You can Wi-Fi an iPad or your computer to it, and they actually don't have, they have, uh, like, sheesh, I don't know, maybe 40, 50 cabs, configurations, and um, all great mics that you can access. There's a, you can access three different microphones at one time. One being, a, and my favorite is uh, something like the, uh, like a 57 for a dynamic mic, and I'll go with a 421 or a 121. As my secondary mic, and then they have, which I've never seen before, they have a, a room mic where you can turn it up, which literally sounds like if you're in if you're in the studio room and your cabinet is in that other room, you literally, you know, in a live circuit so a situation, you can uh, you can hear the resonation of the cabinet in the other room. Well, it kind of gives you that vibe. You Joy notice like how whenever a musician talks about gear, they light up. <laughs> we are talking about speakers and woods, and you just look like the happiest little guy in the world. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Now, of your four guitars, of your four number ones, there's not one that's just a little bit. They're not no. going to hear you. They're, I'm not going to let them watch the interview. No. When you play the most. Oh, that, now in, in the blues context, mm -hmm. I'll use um, I'll use the the ES three thirty five to the super. That's more that's more like uh, more like a classic uh, little Milton kind of sound, you know. Yeah, stock pickups. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. stock pickups. And, uh, and so I'll bring it, and uh, I'll bring I'll bring my Bill Nash. Give me give me more of that uh, Stevie ish, you know. Everybody wants to try to get that sound, you know. Well, fortunately for me, I got the amp. <laughs> well, I tell you what we need to do. I'm a big Hoyt after you leave to invite you back, and this time you're gonna bring an amp and a guitar. Oh, next time y'all come to my house. Oh, we'll do that. Hey, road trip. We can you take the show on the road. Yeah, yeah. Studio Absolutely. equipment. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We can do it. Well, I definitely enjoyed talking to you and meeting you, my friend. Okay, my bro. I appreciate it, man.